Good morning. Today's essay, we're beginning to go deeper into Asidia. Sam Keen, theologian, says that the epidemic of boredom and depression is a symptom of cultural rather than individual failure. Cultural rather than individual failure. So there's something cultural going on that is creating this baseline of apathy or acedia that is preventing us from acting on things as a culture as a whole for the common good. And then when we fail to do that, then it's easy to fall into a selfishness. So I talk in today's essay about the power of love, that love is the opposite of acedia, it's caring. And it's interesting that Dante, who shared a strong cosmology with Thomas Aquinas because his favorite teacher studied directly with Aquinas in Paris. Dante says, love moves the sun and the other stars. Love moves the sun and the other stars. This idea of a cosmic energy called love is so important to recover. And you have it in these great creation mystics. Of course, you have Hildegard of Bingen with her vision of how she saw the whole world in the palm of her hand and it looks so precarious. She asked, how can this survive? And the answer was, love holds it all together. Love holds all beings together. Again, uh, she was writing in the same century as uh, Dante. And so not having a cosmology Therefore, living in a world of anthropocentrism, of the humans being the greatest thing around, uh, all that eats away, saps away our energy uh, for love. Sam Keen talks about a litany of the board. And here's his litany of boredom. Because boredom is integral to acedia also. It doesn't matter. It's not worth getting excited about. I'd rather not risk it. Why fight the system? Find out what they want and give it to them. Why should I care? I don't let anything bother me. That is Sam Keen's litany of the board. <laughs> and I'd add a few others. I've seen it all before. Who does she or he think she is or he is? Who do you think you are? Know your place. Behind acedia, there in boredom, there is a cynicism. Hildegard of Bingen cries out, oh human being, why do you sleep? Why do you have no taste for the good works that sound in God's ear like a symphony? Why do you not search out the house of your heart, the house of your heart? So it's interesting that she connects our tiredness with ignoring the sounds of the universe, the first chakra that resound like a symphony. The cries, therefore, of Mother Earth and her creatures brought about by climate change. It's as if we have chosen to be deaf uh, to these cries. Now, there are things we can do to awaken this sense of love again and uh, to awaken the first chakra. Thich Nhat Hanh suggests that we meditate by breathing in gratitude and breathing out a smile. In gratitude, out smile. That can affect your day. It's very simple, portable, but practical <clears throat> and profound expression of the via positiva. Breathe in gratitude, breathe out a smile. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> you know, the first chakra is about listening. Maybe we can go, which is the true meaning of obedience, Maybe we can practice listening 
for example, for a sound you've never heard before. Go out looking for a sound you never heard before. Or go out listening, looking to listen to birds for their different sounds, the various wonderful songs and varied songs that they sing. Or listen to a new kind of music or a new, new musician. Or do new stories from people who are new to you, come from a tribe different than your own. So there are so many ways to practice and develop our hearing, our listening capacities. And I think this is one way to exercise the, the habits of listening that awaken uh, the first chakra for us. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.